This is Space Time, Series 24, Episode 72. Coming up on Space Time, a third mission bound for Venus, the Mars Perseverance rover on the move on the Red Planet, and China launches another spy satellite as it continues its preparations for war. All that and more coming up on Space Time. Welcome to Space Time with Stuart Gary. The European Space Agency has announced a new mission to study the planet Venus. The Envision orbiter will launch in the early 2030s to study Venus from its upper atmosphere right down to its core in order to determine how and why Venus and Earth evolved so differently. The ESA announcement follows NASA's decision to launch two new missions to Venus, Da Vinci Plus and Veritas, which will fly to Earth's sister planet in 2028 and 2030. Da Vinci will measure the composition of Venus's atmosphere in order to understand how it formed and evolved and to determine if the planet ever had an ocean, while Veritas will map Venus's surface in order to determine the planet's geological history and understand why it developed so differently compared to Earth. And that's where Envision comes in. Envision's instrument package will examine why, despite being formed in the same part of the solar system and being roughly the same size and composition as the Earth, Venus has experienced such a dramatic climate change. Instead of being a habitable world like the Earth, Venus has a toxic atmosphere, with surface temperatures of 470 degrees Celsius, hot enough to melt lead, surface air pressure 99 times greater than that on Earth, and a thick cloud cover raining sulfuric acid and metallic snow covering the mountain peaks. Envision will be equipped with a suite of scientific instruments, including a sounder to reveal underground layering and spectrometers to study the atmosphere and surface. The spectrometers will monitor gases in the atmosphere and they'll analyze surface composition, looking for any changes that could be linked to signs of active volcanism. There'll also be a radar to image and map the surface, while a radio science experiment will probe the planet's internal structure and gravity field, as well as investigate the structure and composition of the atmosphere. These instruments will work together to provide an all-encompassing global view of Venus and its processes. Envision follows in the footsteps of ESA's Venus Express, which orbited the planet between 2005 and 2014, focusing primarily on atmospheric research, but which also made some dramatic discoveries pointing to possible volcanic hotspots on the planet's surface. The new probe will also significantly improve on the radar images of the surface obtained by NASA's Magellan spacecraft in the 1990s. Envision's now moving into the detailed definition phase, where the final design of the spacecraft and its scientific instrument package will be worked out. Once that's done, a contractor will be selected to build and test the probe before it's finally launched aboard an Ariane 6 rocket. At this stage, the earliest launch opportunity for Envision is 2031, with other possible options in 2032 and 33. The spacecraft will take about 15 months to reach the planet, with a further 16 months to achieve orbit insertion through error braking. That's where the probe will use thicker regions of the Venusian atmosphere to slow down and help circularise its orbit. The aim is to target a 92-minute quasi-polar orbit at an altitude of between 220 and 540 kilometres. This is Space Time. Still to come, NASA's Mars Perseverance rover continuing its science mission searching for signs of past microbial life in Jezero Crater's lake bed. And China launches another spy satellite as it continues its preparations for war. All that and more still to come on Space Time. NASA's Mars Perseverance rover is continuing its science mission, searching for signs of past microbial life in Jezero Crater's lake bed. The six-wheel car-sized mobile laboratory has now moved off from its landing site, which has been the base of its operations since first arriving on the Red Planet in mid-February. Until recently, the rover was undergoing systems checks and commissioning tests, and supporting the Mars Ingenuity helicopter's flight tests. Perseverance is now heading for a low-lying scenic lookout, from where the rover will be able to survey some of the oldest geological features in Jezero Crater. 
the rover's auto-navigation and sampling systems are also being brought online. Perseverance has already successfully tested its oxygen-generating MOXIE instrument, its cameras have taken more than 75,000 images, and its microphones have recorded its first audio tracks on the Red Planet. Over the next few months, Perseverance will explore a four-square-kilometre patch of the crater floor, studying the geology of the sediments and collecting its first samples for eventual return to Earth by a future joint NASA ESA mission. Scientists want to understand two unique geological units in Jezero's deepest and most ancient layers of exposed bedrock. The first unit, called the Crater Floor Fractured Rough, is the actual crater-filled floor of Jezero. An adjacent unit named CETA, which means amidst the sand in Navajo, has both bedrock and ridges, layered rocks and sand dunes. Scientists believe that this area was under at least 100 metres of water some 3.8 billion years ago a time when the red planet was a warmer, wetter world, rather than the freeze-dried desert it is today. Travelling through this terrain means Perseverance will need to negotiate the sand dunes, driving mostly either on the crater floor fractured rough or along the boundary line between that and CETA. When needed, Perseverance will perform brief excursions into the CETA unit, making a beeline for a specific area of interest. For mission managers, the big fear is getting the rover bogged in the dunes. That's what ultimately sealed the fate of the Mars exploration rover Spirit. Perseverance's campaign is designed to determine Jezero Crater's early environment and geologic history. This first science campaign will be complete when the rover returns to its landing site. At that point, Perseverance will have travelled between 2.5 and, and 5 kilometres and up to 8 of its 43 sample tubes will be filled with Mars rock and regolith. Next, Perseverance will travel north then west towards the location of its second science campaign which will be at Jezero's Delta region. The Delta is the fan-shaped remains of the confluence of an ancient river and a lake within Jezero Crater. It's a location expected to be especially rich in carbonates Minerals that on Earth at least can preserve fossilised signs of ancient life and be associated with biological processes. This report from NASA TV's Raquel Villanova. NASA's Perseverance rover has been working on its science mission with the help of the SuperCam instrument, a rock vaporising laser and camera that examines rocks and soils. To learn more about SuperCam, we are joined by Hamani Kalucha. She's the Science Payload Uplink Lead for SuperCam Operations. So SuperCam looks out of the big circular window in the white box on top of the mast, and it uses spectroscopy, which is just when light excites atoms in a rock and we get unique shifted wavelengths back to us. And so we use a combination of lasers and infrared vision, and that lets us do science even further out than the robotic arm. The lasers reach 7 meters, or 23 feet away, and the infrared much, much further. Um, and that's not even all. We have a tiny high-resolution camera and a microphone to hear Mars. And that's how we heard the helicopter. And can you talk about some of the images SuperCam has taken and why they are important to scientists? Absolutely. So we started by taking out images and spectra near the rover. The laser actually blows away the dust and makes these small pits in the rocks. And that lets us analyze material that's just below the surface of the rock, which is what we care about. And then we can record the sounds of the laser um, with our microphone, and it tells us something about the hardness of the rocks. And then starting Sol 26, we were able to take pictures of these long distance targets like Kodiak, and that really helps the rover team understand where to drive next for more close-up analysis. Infrared, um, telling us about the mineral content of these faraway outcrops. So that's how SuperCam figures out more about the geological history of Mars. And we're so excited to see what the laser can do next. Thank you so much for joining us today, Hamani. And that report was from NASA TV's Raquel Villanova. Meanwhile, NASA's Mars Ingenuity helicopter has successfully undertaken its seventh flight on the Red Planet. Ingenuity flew for 106 metres south from its liftoff point to a new landing spot, a flight lasting 62.8 seconds. It follows last month's in-flight technical glitch, which marred and prematurely ended its sixth flight. An unplanned anomaly interrupted the flow of images from Ingenuity's navigation camera to its computer. The glitch saw the rotocopter lose just one single image, but that consequently resulted in all subsequent images being delivered with the incorrect timestamps, and that caused Ingenuity to begin adjusting its velocity 
and tilting back and forth in an oscillating pattern which persisted throughout the rest of the flight. Luckily, it managed to touch down safely following a bumpy ride. Mission managers at JPL have looked at that vulnerability issue and think they may have resolved the problem. This is space time. Still to come, China launches another spy satellite as it continues its preparations for war. And later in the science report, unmasked speech in confined places found to be the main way COVID-19 spreads. All that and much more still to come on Space Time. China has launched four more satellites, including two Earth observation satellites, as it continues its ongoing preparations for war. The spacecraft were launched aboard a Long March 2D rocket from the Taiyuan Satellite Launch Center in northern China's Jiangxi province. The payloads included the Beijing 3, the Haisi 2, the Yangwang 1, and the Tianjiang Space Test 1 satellites. China is releasing very few details about the Beijing 3 spacecraft, claiming it's a remote sensing satellite for resource surveys, city management, environmental monitoring, and disaster relief. However, the spacecraft is designed to provide extremely high-resolution observations down to just half a metre in resolution. It's been placed in a sun-synchronous orbit. The HiC-2 spacecraft is also designed for remote sensing, but this one's focusing on monitoring coastal and inland water environments. The Yangwang-1 is a commercial optical astronomy satellite designed to study asteroids, their orbits, and their potential resources and the Tianjin Space Test 1 satellite is designed to test various new spacecraft management systems. The flight marked the 373rd mission of a Long March series rocket. This is Space Time. And time now to take another brief look at some of the other stories making news in science this week with the Science Report. A new study has confirmed that airborne transmission by way of unmasked speech in confined places is the main way SARS-CoV-2, a virus which causes COVID-19, is transmitted to others. A report in the Journal of Internal Medicine has found that COVID-19 transmission occurs by way of speech-generated potentially virus-rich droplets, which float in the air for minutes like smoke, thus putting others at risk. The authors found that different sized respiratory droplets emitted while speaking can span a continuum of sizes and can carry different amounts of the virus. The most concerning are intermediate sized droplets. These can remain suspended in the air for minutes and can be transported over considerable distances by convective air currents. The World Health Organization now estimates more than 8 million people have been killed by the COVID-19 coronavirus with almost 4 million confirmed fatalities and almost 180 million people infected since the deadly disease first spread out of Wuhan, China. Marine biologists have discovered a devastating new skin disease affecting dolphins, which is caused by climate change. Scientists have found that the increasing frequency and severity of storm systems is dramatically decreasing the salinity of coastal waters, and that's causing a fatal freshwater skin disease in dolphins worldwide. The findings published in the journal Scientific Reports show that up to 70% of dolphins' bodies are infected with patchy and raised skin lesions. The devastating skin disease was first detected in bottlenose dolphins near New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina in 2005. And the same illness is now killing dolphins off the coast of southeastern Australia. Scientists say the long-term outlook for dolphins infected with the disease is poor. Scientists have developed a new robot named the Wombot, which can be used to study and spy on wombat burrows. A report in the Journal of Applied Sciences claims the mechanical marsupial is remotely controlled and trundles around on track-like tracks reaching speeds of half a kilometre an hour. Wombot is fitted with a battery of high-tech equipment, including sensors that record temperature and humidity, front and rear cameras, and a front-mounted gripper paw that can place and retrieve other environmental sensors. Scientists have been using Wombot to peek into 30 Tasmanian wombat burrows 
and say the information gathered should help them understand where the conditions in the burrows can help sarcoptic mange, a serious condition spread between animals. Scientists have found that the Earth's deepest life scavenges on carbon. A report in the journal Nature claims researchers exploring one of the deepest layers of the Earth's crust ever studied are finding life there. An analysis of rock samples from the very bottom of the Indian Ocean has revealed microbes that have adapted to living within nutrient-poor hairline fractures in the Earth. The researchers found several species of bacteria, as well as fungi and archaea that live in the rocks and feed on carbon from fragments of amino acids and other organic molecules carried in deep ocean currents. India is now reporting more than 60,000 new cases of COVID-19 every day, with more than 1,500 people now dying from the virus daily. The immense scale of the tragedy is almost impossible to comprehend. Yet as the subcontinent continues to be devastated by the deadly disease, comes news that Indian officials are deliberately promoting COVID misinformation. Tim Mendham from Australian Skeptics says Indian politicians are promoting quack cures, with things like cow dung and urine being just two of the outrageous suggestions being touted. In India at the moment, of course, is suffering through some very bad situations regarding its uh, COVID, right, and the number of deaths, the number of cases, and how actively it's actually how successfully it's uh, implementing a vaccine program. A big country, mediocre or poor um, health system, a lot of people in the you know, sort of in dire straits in poverty. And more than 4, You can imagine they'd be having a hard terrible. time. Yeah, dealing with and plus mass groups and plus political parties who are encouraging people to go to political rallies and all sorts of things. So, you know, hardly social distancing, hardly doing the right thing. But on top of that, our politicians themselves and uh, health advisors within government ranks, within the, 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 the uh, public sector, are recommending recommending all sorts of shonky cures or treatments. And one of them is cow dung baths, right? That you should actually be swimming around in cow dung. Of course, cows are sacred under Hindus. But but you're swimming around in cow dung, covering yourself in uh, whatever. And... uh, also cow urine. I guess for some people a hot cuppa in the morning has has a completely different meaning. Washing yourself with that is apparently uh, a cure. Mass steam inhalation events uh, is another one being recommended. And these are not being put out by quack These are, quack official, doctors or quack these sort of, are Indian politicians. These are, these are Indian yeah. politicians doing this. What's the Indian government but, uh, doing And therefore, you know, you, you, there's a particular story which you look through. It's rather gruesome seeing all these people covered in cow dung. Uh, cow, uh, was it uh, milk can supposedly cure? Um, because it comes from cows again. Um, that, that can be treated COVID. There's all sorts of weird things that are being put forward. Now, there's a lot of superstition in India. There's homeopathy is pretty right there. Ayurvedic medicine is, is obviously a pretty major thing there. And that's got a lot of issues with it as well. So it's a place which is rife for pseudoscience and pseudomedicine and there's a lot of it there and if, you, if you're a sceptic in India, you've got, a, you've got your work cut out for you in, in trying to sort of deal with all these things. Universities doing sort of courses in mystical beliefs and this sort of stuff. So India is a place where was it 1.1 billion people or so in, in, in the country, poor health, poor education, all sorts of things. It's sad that, that the people are being taken advantage of. Can we say for the record that cow dung, cow urine does not cure COVID and does not keep COVID at bay? It won't, it won't protect you, but uh, there's a lot of superstition out there. And when it's been put forward by politicians and people, then you really got to worry. That's Tim Mendham from Australian Skeptics. And that's the show for now. Space Time is available every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday through Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, Spotify, Acast, Amazon Music, Bytes.com, SoundCloud, YouTube, your favorite podcast download provider, and from SpaceTimeWithStuartGary.com. Space Time's also broadcast through the National Science Foundation on Science Zone Radio and on both iHeartRadio and TuneIn Radio. And you can help to support our show by visiting the Spacetime store for a range of promotional merchandising goodies. Or by becoming a Spacetime patron, which gives you access to triple episode commercial free versions of the show, as well as lots of bonus audio content which doesn't go to air, access to our exclusive Facebook group and other rewards. Just go to spacetimewithstuartgary.com for full details. And if you want more space time, please check out our blog where you'll find all the stuff we couldn't fit in the show, as well as heaps of images, news stories, loads of videos, and things on the web I find interesting or amusing. 
just go to spacetimewithstuartgary.tumblr.com. That's all one word, and that's Tumblr without the E. You can also follow us through at Stuart Gary on Twitter, at Spacetime with Stuart Gary on Instagram, through our Spacetime YouTube channel, and on Facebook, just go to facebook.com forward slash Spacetime with Stuart Gary. And Spacetime is brought to you in collaboration with Australian Sky and Telescope magazine, your window on the universe. You've been listening to Spacetime with Stuart Gary. This has been another quality podcast production from Bytes.com. 